8.55 Eastern Time. And Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. The defense of Finland continues under a new ministry formed today, and the Finns have claimed successes in holding off the Russians. It is clear now that when the Russians, before the invasion began, demanded the resignation of the Kleander ministry, they meant that it would have to be replaced by a government which would take orders from Russia. For the Moscow radio announced tonight that Russia would not deal with the new government, which is headed by the banker Risto Riti and includes the socialist Tonner as Minister of Foreign Affairs. But there is a group calling itself the Government of Finland, which suits the Russians exactly. It was formed today by Finnish communists on Finnish soil, but in a town ten miles inside the frontier, which was captured yesterday by the Russians. As if Eastport, Maine, had been captured by a foreign army, and a dozen American communists met there and proclaimed themselves the Government of the United States. This so-called People's Government of Finland, headed by Otto Kuzinen, a former secretary of the Communist International, has not yet been recognized by the Russian government, but the Moscow radio, which is of course official, says that Russia will deal only with this group. As the Finnish communists immediately asked the Red Army to give them all necessary assistance, the Russians can now say that they have been invited in by the government of Finland. The Moscow radio adds that when this government comes to power in Helsinki, it will assure the independence and security of Finland by friendly relations with Russia. But, of course, it isn't in yet. A statement by Prime Minister Riti, which was read over this and other networks earlier this evening, said that, I quote, We are ready to negotiate all questions, but we will not barter away our independence, end quote. In the day's fighting, the Finns claim considerable advantages. They say that on the Karelian Isthmus, just northwest of Leningrad, which is the scene of the principal Russian attack, the Finnish counterattack took 1,200 prisoners. At Suoyarvi, northeast of Lake Ladoga, they claim to have repulsed the Russians with heavy losses, thanks to a new type of automatic rifle which fires almost as fast as a machine gun. The Finns further say that they destroyed 36 Russian tanks in the two days' fighting and shot down 18 planes. Reports that a Russian cruiser was sunk by the batteries defending the port of Hongo are unconfirmed. But in one sector, the Russians appear to have met with success. On the Arctic coast, they captured the town of Petsamo after heavy fighting. It was reported captured yesterday, but this time it appears to be true. And they're said to have occupied the 30-odd miles of Finnish coast between Russia and Norway. And Russian planes have raided Helsinki again and seem to have flown pretty well all over Finland. Three of them appeared above the Swedish frontier town of Tornia at the head of the Gulf of Bothnia, where the air raid alarm was promptly sounded, although no bombs were dropped on Swedish territory. President Roosevelt this morning appealed to both governments to avoid what he called the inhuman barbarism of bombing undefended towns and civilian populations. As a matter of form, of course, such appeals as this have to be sent to both governments, even if you think that only one is likely to do it. Tonight, the Russian Premier Molotov told our Ambassador Steinhardt in Moscow that this appeal was groundless and based on a misunderstanding, as the Russians were bombing nothing but airports. If that is the case, their marksmanship is pretty bad, for they've done immense property damage and killed and wounded hundreds of people in downtown Helsinki. Bombs have destroyed a German-owned factory in Helsinki. The German radio, in its only mention of this war tonight, said that the Russians had bombed the military institute and, aside from that, had dropped leaflets. But some of the leaflets seemed to blow up when they hit. President Roosevelt said this afternoon that this war comes as a profound shock to the people and government of the United States and that it was an instance of a trend which jeopardizes the independence of small nations on every continent. The Russian operations don't seem to be popular anywhere outside of Russia. In Germany, as Russell Hill reported earlier this evening, it was hoped that with the resignation of the Kleander government, the Russians would be ready to call off the war. Since they didn't, the Germans aren't saying much. Nothing much happened in the other war today except the sinking of two freighters, one British and one Finnish. But we have some real news from Japan. Tonight, the government radio says that Admiral Nomura, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, has notified the French ambassador that importation of arms into China from French Indochina must cease. When the Japanese say must, it is hard to see how the French in the present situation can give them much of an argument. And thus, what has been one of the chief sources of supply for Chiang Kai-shek's army is likely to be cut off. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 